today a pirate prentice rises from indentures free. Strong his arms and keen his senses, he's a pirate now. He is good luck to Frederick's ventures, Frederick's out of his indentures. Two and twenty now he's rising, and no more he's fit to fly. Which were bent on signalizing with unusual rapid eye. He is good luck to Frederick's ventures, Frederick's out of his indentures. For a poor the pirate ship, he fill a fill the pirate glass. With that I could repay them as they deserve. What do you mean? Today I'm out of my indentures, and today I leave you forever. But this is quite unaccountable. A keener hand at scuttling a canada or cutting out a white star never shipped a hand spike. I have done my best for you, but why? It was my duty under my indentures, and I am the slave of duty. As a child, I was regularly accompanied to your bands. It was uh, through and error, no matter. The mistake was ours, not yours. And I was honored bound by it. An error? What error? I may not tell you. It would reflect upon our well-loved Ruth. No, dear master. My mind has long been gnawed by the cankering tooth of mystery. Better have it out, at once. <laughs> When Frederick was a little lad, he proved so brave and daring. His father thought he'd prentice him to some career seafaring. I was a loss, his nurse remained, and so it fell to my lot to take and bind a promising boy, apprentice to a pilot. A life not bad for a hardy lad That was surely not the high lot Though I'm a nurse, you might do worse Than make your boy a pilot I was a stupid nursery maid On breakers always steering And I did not catch the word or right hard of hearing, mistaking my instructions, which within my brain did gyrate. I took and bound this promising boy, apprentice to a pirate. A sad mistake it was to make and doom him to a violet. What? I bound him to a pirate, you instead of to a pilot. I soon found out beyond all doubt the scope of this disaster, but I hadn't the face to return to my place and break it to my master. A nursery maid is not afraid of what you people call work, so I made up my mind to go as a kind of Piratical made of all work. And that is how you find me now, a member of this Shylot. What you wouldn't have found had he been bound, a apprentice to a pilot. <laughs> Frederick, pardon. Right, sweet one, I've long pardoned you. The two words were so much alike. They were. They still are. <laughs> Though the years have rolled over their heads. But this afternoon, my obligation ceases. Individually, I love you all. Affections unspeakable. Aww. But collectively, I look upon you with a face of disgust that leads to absolute detestation. What? Oh, pity me, my beloved friend, for such is my sense of duty. 
that once set out to my indentures, I shall feel myself bound to devote myself, heart and soul, to your extermination. Poor, Poor lad! Poor lad! lad. Well, Frederick, if you conscientiously feel that it is your duty to destroy us all, we cannot blame you for acting in that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We do not seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. I know why, but uh, alas, I mustn't tell you. It wouldn't be right. Why not, my boy? It's only half past eleven, and you are one of us until the clock strikes twelve. True. And until then, you are bound to protect our interests. Hear, hear! Hear, Well, then, it is my duty as a pirate to tell you that you are too tender-hearted. For instance, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves. And when you attack a stronger party, you invariably get thrashed. There is some truth in that. Yeah. Then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. Of course. We are orphans ourselves, and know what it is. Yes, but it has got about. And what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. The last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans, so we had to let them go. When we think that Britain's mercantile navy was recruited solely by her orphans' asylums, which we know is not the case. But hang it all, you wouldn't have us absolutely merciless. There's my difficulty. Before 12 o'clock, I wouldn't. After 12 o'clock, I would. With seven men placed in such delicate a situation. And Ruth, your own Ruth you love so well, who has won a middle-aged way into your boyish heart. What is to become of her? Oh! He will take you with him. Well, Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It is true that I admire you very much, but I've been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I've seen during that time. Uh, I think it is a sweet face. It is? Oh, it is. I say I think it is. That is my impression. But I've never had the opportunity of comparing with other women. It may be possible I am mistaken. True. What a terrible thing it would be for me to marry this innocent person, then find out that she is, on a whole, plain. Oh, Ruth is very well. Very well indeed. Yes, there are the remains of a fine woman about Ruth. <laughs> you think so? I do. Then I will not be so selfish as to take her from you. In consideration to you and in justice for her, I shall leave her behind. No, Frederick. It must not be. We are rough men! Rough! We lead a rough life! Rough, rough! We are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. I think I am right in saying that not one here would rob thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Not one! No, I thought there wasn't. Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love! You're very good, I'm sure. Well, Frederick, it's the top of the tide and we must be off. When the process of your extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will. By the love I have for you, I swear it. With that, you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. No, Frederick, it cannot be. I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick. I shall live and die a pirate king! Huzzah! Oh, better far to live and die Under the brave black flag I fly Than play a sanctimonious part With a pirate head and a pirate heart Away to the cheating world go you Where pirates all are well to do But I'll be true to the song I sing And live and die a pirate king For I am a pirate king And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king, for I am a pirate king. Oh, 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 a pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is for all for a pirate king, for all for a pirate king. When 
I sally forth to seek my prey, I help myself in a royal way. I sink a few more ships, it's true, than a well-bred monarch ought to do. But any a king on a first-class throne, if he wants to call his crown his own, must manage somehow to get through more dirty work than ever I do. For I am a pirate king, and it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. For I am a pirate king. Wa -wa 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 Farewell, Frederick. Thank you. Farewell. As you know, but I must be circumspect. You see, you're considerably older than I. A lad of 21 usually looks for a wife of 17. A wife of 17? You'll find me a wife of a thousand. No, I shall find you a wife of 47, and that is quite enough. Ruth? Tell me candidly, and without reserve, compared to other women, how are you? I will answer you truthfully, Master. I have a slight cold, but otherwise I'm quite well. Oh, I'm sorry for your cold, but I was referring rather to your personal appearance. Compared to other women, are you beautiful? I have been told so, dear Master. Ah, uh, but lately? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, years and years ago. What do you think of yourself? It is a delicate question to answer, but I think I'm a fine woman. And that is your candid opinion? Yes. I should be deceiving you if I told you otherwise. Thank you, Ruth. I believe you. For I know you will not practice on my inexperience. I wish you to do the right thing. And if, I say if, you were really a fine woman, as you say, there'd be no obstacle to our union. Hark! Surely I hear voices. Who has ventured to an arbiter? Inaccessible lair. Could it be Custom House? No, no, it doesn't sound like Custom House. Confusion. It is the voices of young girls. If he should see them, then I am lost. How marvelous. A bevy of beautiful maidens. Lost, lost, lost. How lovely. How surpassingly lovely is the plainest of them. What grace. What delicacy. What refinement. And Ruth. Ruth told me she was beautiful. Oh, false one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, deceived me. You told me you were fair as gold. And master, am I not so? And now I see you're plain and old. I'm sure I'm not a jutsu. Upon my innocence you play. I'm not the one to plot so. Your face is lined, your hair is gray. It's gradually got so. Faith is woman to deceive me, I who trusted so. Masa, Masa, do not leave me, hear me ere you go. Faith is woman. Masa, Masa. Faith is woman.
very highest rating has been accumulating summer 17 summer 17 touch me loved monster crush me with disaster what is such a tower to the tower Faithless woman to deceive me, hear me What shall I do before these gentle maidens? I dare not show in this alarming costume. No, no, I must remain close concealment before I can appear in decent clothing. Climbing over rocky rocks, escaping with a death from 
we are. And I wonder where Papa is. We have left him ever so far behind. Oh, he will be here presently. Remember, poor Papa is not as young as we are, and we came from a rather difficult country. But how delightful is it to be so entirely alone? Why, in all probability, we are the first human beings to ever set foot on this enchanting spot. Except the mermaids, the very place for mermaids! Who are only human beings down to the waist. <laughs> and who can't be said strictly to have set foot anywhere. Tails they may, but feet they cannot. Well, what shall we do until Papa and the servants arrive with the luncheon? Hmm. We are quite alone. And the sea is as smooth as glass. Suppose we take off our shoes. <gasps> and our stockings. Oh! And paddle! Stop, ladies, pray. I'm oh. a <laughs> I had intended not to intrude myself upon your notice in this affective but alarming costume. But under these peculiar circumstances, it's my bound duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, Sir Speak? I am a pirate. A pirate, horror! Oh. Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I renounce my vile profession. And to that end, O oh pure and peerless maidens, Oh, blushing buds of ever-blooming beauty, I soar at heart, I soar at heart, implore your kind assistance. How pitiful his tale, how rare his beauty, how pitiful his tale, how rare Not one maiden breast which does not feel the moral beauty of making worldly interest subordinate to sense of duty. Who would not give up willingly a matrimonial ambition to rescue such as one as I from his unfortunate position, from his position to rescue such as one as I from his unfortunate position. Alas, there's not one maid in rest who seems to feel the moral beauty of making worthy interest subordinate to sense of duty. Oh, is there not one maiden here? Only face and bad complexion oh! have caused all hope to disappear of ever winning man's affection to such an one, if such there be. I swear by heaven's arch above you, if you will cast your eyes on me, however plain you. I'll love you, however plain you'll be. If you will cast your eyes on me, however plain you'll be, I'll love you, I'll love you. Whose holy face and bed.
not one. No, no. Yes, one. Tis, tis Mabel. Mabel. Yes, tis me. Bell. Oh, sisters, deaf to pity's name for shame. It's true that he has gone astray, but pray. Is that a reason good as true? Why you should all be deaf to Patty's name? The question is, had he not been a thing of beauty, would she be swayed by quite as keen a sense of duty? For shame, for shame, for shame. How 
Slowly through the sky, the glass is rising very high. Continue fine, I hope it may end yet. It rained but yesterday. Tomorrow it may pour again. I hear the country wants some rain, and people say, I know not why that we shall have a warm. Tomorrow it may pour again. I hear the country wants some rain, and people say, I know not why that we shall have a warm. Tomorrow it may pour again. I hear the country wants some rain. Beautifully blue the sky, the glass is rising very high. Continue fine, I hope it may, and yet it rained but yesterday. Continue fine, I hope it may, and yet it rained but yesterday. How beautifully blue the sky, the glass is rising very high. Continue fine, I hope it may, and yet it rained but yesterday. Senses, men who sick and no offenses will on on be here. Piracy, their dreadful trade is prey. You get you hands on the ladies while the coast is clear. No, we must not lose our senses. If we sick and no offenses, we should not be here. Piracy, their dreadful trade is nice companions for your ladies. Let us see so. Opportunity to get married with impunity. And you indulge in the felicity of unbounded domesticity. You shall quickly be personified, conjugally matrimonified by a doctor of divinity who is located in this vicinity. We have missed our opportunity of escaping with impunity. So we're well to the felicity of our maiden domesticity. You shall quickly be personified, conjugally matrimonified by a doctor. Danger may befall. Their father is a major general. Yes, yes, he is a major general. Yes, yes, I am a major general. For he is a major general. He is a rock of a major general. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a major general. It is a rock of a major general. Model of a modern major general. I'm information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England and acquaint the fight historical. From marathon to Waterloo and Arctic and Agoracle. I'm very well acquainted too with matters mathematical. I understand equations both the symbol and quadratical. A bad one theorem of teeming with a lot of news. Hmm. Lot of news? Hmm. Ah, with many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the I know our mythic history king Arthur's in the Caradox. I answer hard in cross I have a pretty taste for paradox. I quote in elegiacs of the crimes of you, Gabbles. In conics, I can flow peculiarities, parabolas. 
I can tell and dodge and rap ass from Jedi Dows and Zophonies. I know the croaking chorus from the frogs of Aristophanes. And I can have a few good ones I've heard the music's you know more. Thank you. And whistle all the ass from that inferno not skin of And whistle all the ass from that inferno not skin
often frequently? No, only once! Exactly. Use it often frequently only once.
Cannot you, in the calm excellence of your wisdom, reconcile it with your conscience to say something that will relieve my father's sorrow? We try, dear Raven, but why does he sit night after night in this drafty old room? Why do I sit here? <laughs> to escape the pirate's clutches, I described myself as an orphan and heaven help me, I am no orphan. I come here to humble myself before the tomb of my ancestors and implore their pardon for having brought this But you forget, sir. You only bought the property a year ago, and the stucco in your baronial castle is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel there are ancestors. You cannot deny that. With the estate, I bought this chapel and its contents. I don't know whose ancestors they were, <laughs> but I know whose ancestors they are. And I shudder. Be competent. Had you not acted as you did, these reckless men would have surely called the nearest clergyman and married your large family on the spot. Thank you for your solace, but it is unavailing. I assure you of the anguish and the remorse I feel of the abominable faults that I told to escape those easily deluded pirates. That I would go to their simple-minded chief this very night and confess all. I not fear the consequences would be disastrous to myself. <laughs> At what time does your execution mask get discounted? At eleven. Before midnight, I hope to have atoned to my involuntary association with the pestilence gorges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, Tim Mabel will be mine. Are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only await my orders. <laughs> Your escort lie in hearted. Be summoned to receive a general's blessing. Ere they depart upon their dread adventure. Dear sir, they come.
most curious. No one would think to look at me. Look at me. <laughs> you are glad now. I'll be bound that you've spared us. You would never have forgiven yourself when you discovered that you killed two of your comrades. My comrades? I'm afraid you don't appreciate the delicacy of your position. You were apprenticed to us. Until I reach my 21st year. No, until you reach your 21st birthday. And going by birthdays, you are as yet only five and a quarter. <laughs> you don't mean to say you were going to hold me to that. No! We merely remind you of this fact and leave the rest to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty? Well, you have appealed to my sense of duty, and my duty is too clear. I abhor your infamous calling. I shudder at the fact that I've ever been mixed up with it. But duty is the fall of. At any price, I will do my duty. Bravely spoken. Come, you are one of us once more. Lead on. I follow. <laughs> What's the Mabel I should make it for us? I should tell her I've discovered my forgotten morses. Now I don't get to a pet the penny for any consequence. Now I don't want to perish by the sword or by the dagger, but a harder man and done a little part of the little swagger. But I wanted to a cover that my vanity was found. But I got to die tomorrow, so it really doesn't matter. 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 So it really doesn't matter, 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 matter. If I were not a little mad and generally silly, I should give you my advice upon the subject willy nilly. I should show you in a moment how to grapple with the question, and really be astonished at the force of my suggestion. On the subject, I should write to you a sky you of a letter full of excellent suggestions when I feel a little better. But at present, I'm as brave, for I'm as mad as any had us. So I'll give it to myself, and my opinion doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter, her opinion doesn't matter, her opinion doesn't matter, her opinion doesn't matter. It has never yet once been appealed in vain. General Stanley, the father of my dear Mabel. Yes, yes. yes. He escaped from you on the plea that uh, he was an orphan. He did. It breaks my heart to hurt the honored father of the girl that I adore. But as your apprentice, I have no alternative. It's my duty to tell you that General Stanley is no orphan. that in order to save his contestable life, he practised upon our credulous simplicity? <laughs> our revenge shall be swift and terrible. We will go and collect our band and attack Tremorden Castle this very night. But Shay! Not a word! He is doomed! Away, away, my heart's on fire. I've heard this big deception to repay. This very night, my vengeance is dire. Shall glide itself in glory. Duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with things die. It strikes me to the floor away, away. Pulse and valley tripped us all our pride. Then vengeance how the pirates of his sides. Our nature stern, he softened with his lies. And in return, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Tonight he dies. Yes, or early tomorrow. She grows like wise. There was a in sorrow. For once of spot. In their natures they cherish. And all who plot. Who abuse it shall perish. Tonight he dies. It's early, early tomorrow. tomorrow. His girls like wise. There was in sorrow. No one shall spot. In their natures they cherish. And all who plot. To abuse it shall perish. Away, away.
captain until I reach my one and twentieth birthday. But you are but twenty-one. I just discovered that I was born in leap year, and the birthday will not be reached by me till nineteen forty. Catastrophe appalling. And so farewell. No, no. Oh, Frederick, hear me. Stay, Frederick, stay. They have no legal claim, no shadow of a shame. Wait. 
motivated by a sense of duty. That makes a difference, of course. At the same time, we repeat, we cannot understand it at all. No matter, our course is clear. We must do our best to capture these pirates alone. It is most distressing to us to be the agents whereby our erring fellow creatures are deprived of that liberty which is so dear to us all. But we should have thought of that before we joined the force. We should. It is too late now. It is. When a felon sought engaged in his employment, his employment, for maturing his felonious little plan, little plan, his capacity for innocent enjoyment, innocent enjoyment, is just as great as any honest man, honest man, our feelings we with difficulty smother, difficulty smother, what constabulary duties to be done, to be done, ah, take one consideration with another, with another, a policeman's lot is not a Happy one. Oh, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done, a policeman's lot is not a happy one. When the enterprising burglar's not a burglar, not a burglar. when the cockroach isn't occupied in time, he loves to hear. To cook a gurgling, and to the merry village chime. Village chime. When the cock is finished jumping on his mother, on his mother. he loves to lie a basking in the sun. In the sun. Ah, take one consideration with another. With another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Footfall with me, 
bones so quickly hide. Yes, yes. Shh. The Major General comes. Yes, yes. The Major General comes. Yes, yes. The Major General comes. Tormented with the anguish dread of falsehood unaturned. I lay upon my sleepless bed and tossed and turned and groaned. The man who finds his conscience ignorant no peace at all enjoys. And as I lay in bed awake, I thought I heard a noise. He thought he heard a noise. <laughs> <laughs> no, all is still in Dale on Hill. My mind is set at ease. So still the scene, it must have been the sighing of the
worked upon our feelings. Revenge is sweet and flavors all our dealings. With courage rare and resolution madly. For death prepare unhappy General Stanley. Is he to die unshriven, unannealed? Who's there? Will no one in his cause a weapon wield? Who's there? Yes, we are here. No hither to conceal. Who could stop me letting pirates yield? advantage you contrived, but your proud triumph will not be long lived. Don't say you're orphans, for we know that game. On your allegiance we've a stronger claim. We charge you yield. <laughs> We charge you yield <laughs> in Queen Victoria's name. You do, we do, we charge you yield in Queen Victoria's name. We yield at humbled mean because with all our faults we love our queen yes yes with all their faults they love their queen yes yes with all their faults they love their queen away with them and place them at the bar statement is because with all our faults we love our house of peers I pray you pardon me ex-pirate king peers will be peers and youth will have its fling resume your ranks and legislative duties and take my daughters all of whom are beauties <laughs> He have surely strayed. 